And it's just going to be really confusing to them because literally gonna... people can't even differentiate between a FOB from Asia and an Asian American in a larger, like, middle America sense. Asian representation does affect all lives because essentially if you look Asian, whether or not you're born in Asia, you're raised there, or you're raised in America, you're born and raised here. Welcome everybody to the Hot Pot Boys. We got David, Andrew, Nelson, Chan in the building. Hey, we finally got Hot Pot for the Hot Pot Boys to talk about some hot topics. You know, the studio is great, but sometimes you got to take it to the source. Hey, very excited because we're here at Da Long Yi, one of only two locations in America to hot pot chain straight from Sichuan. One of the best hot pots in the world, guys. So Today, we got two spicy topics for you over mm -hmm. the spicy broth. Ooh. The first one is pitting Asians from Asia versus Asian Americans on how much to care about Hollywood representation. Basically, you know, I'm not saying, you know, everybody feels one way or the other, but in recently, there have been some high profile Asians born and raised in Asia saying, man, Asian Americans, why, why do you guys even care about Hollywood? I don't care. I don't care about appropriation. I don't care about any of this stuff. You guys aren't even Asian. And based on that, I just want to say I'm so tired of seeing on TikTok that Asian Americans telling a white person or a black person or anyone in general that's not Asian to stop culture appropriating our culture. I mean, first of all, you're Americans. Like if you go to China, if you go to Hong Kong, Japan, yeah, you look like us, but you're American. And that, of course, is causing a lot of Asian Americans to clap back and be like, hold up, why, why do you get to put that on me? Oh. You don't know our struggle, et cetera, We're et talking cetera. about thousands of comments from Asian Americans on the internet going against these people. Mm -hmm. Topic number two, we are talking about China bans. Of course, you know, it feels like we are talking about China bans last week, China bans this week. Uh, certain <laughs> headlines go more or less viral. This one happens to go really viral. It's called China bans sissy men on TV. All right, so what we got to do is actually we're going to talk about what that actually means and if it's actually true and if so how true yeah no do you know where the other Dalong Yi location is in the US I mean in the other big Asian community the 626 San Gabriel <laughs> <laughs> so yeah hey guys by the way we're about to get into this food before we get into those topics Dalong Yi only exists in New York's Chinatown and San Gabriel in the 626 which is like Ellie's new Chinatown basically <laughs> guys very excited to cover these topics over some mala broth but let's get into it let's eat Now that we got some food in our belly, we got to talk about the first topic and we got to get into this because there's a lot of Asians from Asia that are stepping up and this was sparked by a TikToker who came out and they made this video kind of saying essentially that she didn't care about appropriation, guys. It's all about appreciation, that anytime someone wears like a Chinese chi pao, it's a compliment. Culture is meant to be shared, which I agree well, with you that talking about CK Lam, but she basically yeah. said that Asian Americans don't have any right to police Asian culture because they're not even Asian. Right. Which is the thing that sparked thousands of comments and then other people kind of came out of the woodwork going, I don't care about Shang-Chi. I don't care about Asians in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Hollywood's a white system uh, made by white people for white people. Uh, I just only like watching Japanese, Korean, Chinese movies. I don't care about any of this. I do want to say and that. It, and it sparked an internet war. You know what's funny? Crazy. This debate is actually not super new though. It's always happened where there's always kind of sometimes been this rift between Asians in Asia and how they feel about people appropriating the culture. They don't take as much offense to it. Maybe it's because they're in Asia and they have all the Asian media representation, all the faces are out there while they're just like, yeah, we have our faces out there. Why We don't need our faces here, only if they're good. No, what is your major takeaway on this rift? Because we're talking about thousands of comments on both sides. I would say maybe more overwhelmingly on the Asian American side, but still it's a debate. I think it's fair for them to individually have those type of beliefs and thinking. You know, I'm talking about the, the Asians in Asia because, you know, me living in Asia for like two years, I noticed that, you know, the Asians over there who tell me or who talk to me, like, they don't, it's not like they don't care about what happens in America or, or about Asian American culture, but, you know, they more so kind of focus on, you know, what they want to do in Asia or what is important to them in Asia where, I mean, I guess it makes sense to them, but, uh, at least at the end of the day, I just hope that you know it's not. We're not asking them to support us, uh, but you know, at least they, they can't. They shouldn't go against us. Yeah, I you know, at the end of the day, we're still all Chinese. We're still all Asian. Like you know, yeah. don't hate on each other. I think the one thing here that uh, everybody needs to understand is that. Asian representation does affect all lives because essentially if you look Asian, whether or not you're born in Asia, you're raised there, or you're raised in America, you're born and raised here, a lot of us look similar. So on just a looks basis, it does affect everybody. 
and that's representation across the board. Now, I do feel it when people say, hey, culture is meant to be shared, and we've talked about these topics before about people like remaking Asian food and stuff like that, and I do think generally, if it's done out of respect and shown appreciation, and they acknowledge the history behind those foods or cultures or clothing or whatever it is, I think it is up for grabs, right? Because culture does get shared. A lot of people, even in Asia, they're using Western culture as well. So basically, are you guys saying the um, these, I guess, people, Asians from Asia that are going against the Asian American woke movement, they have a valid point or they have a valid perspective? They have a valid perspective, but one thing that a lot of them are overlooking is the struggle that a lot of Asian Americans go through. And we've all been through it of like kind of fighting for your identity here because I, you're not, you're a different looking American even though you're American. I right? think that they're just born into like, imagine we're like trying to navigate our way up a house to the highest level of the house, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They're born in a completely different house than we are. Yeah. We're born in like the Western house, which happens to be run by uh, white looking people, right? Sure. And they're born into the Asia house, and they're just navigating that. So as Asians are trying to, uh, got stuck at the bottom of the White House for a while in terms of representation, and they're trying to work their way up, um, some people are saying, well, I grew up in the Asia house, I completely don't care about our struggle rising up that white ladder. Basically, right? And they're actually being very, uh, they're just succumbing to self-centered human nature. They're not necessarily making a crazy read or a crazy wrong or immoral read, but it is a little selfish. Yeah. Because obviously, yeah. we are born in the Western house. We can't jump to the Eastern house. And some people say, oh, why don't you just be like Daniel Wu or Jay Park and go over there? That opportunity is not available for all of us. Yeah. Uh, Nell, you kind of did that. You like, hop back to the Asian house to go Like, if it's that easy, everyone would do it, right? <coughs> Sorry. Spicy. A lot of chili stuff. Oh. Yeah, you got see, this is why this is a dangerous <clears throat> food video to do right now. Okay. No, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, that's why I got to give a lot of respect, you know, to Asia and like, the culture and the people in Asia because you know they gave me an opportunity to do something with my career over there in Asia you know living in China and playing professionally in Macau but that's why I, sh I have to show love to them and show love to you know Asian American culture in America too but it seems that's like why. they don't necessarily feel the same way about showing love to Asian American culture. exactly because like they should because you know a lot of you know fobs or you know Asian people move over to America to you know start whatever life they want to do like like they shouldn't hate that because like their cousin could be like you know living in like America and like yeah. doing what they do. So like, yeah, I see some some hypocrisy in saying that in America because uh, as you can see in the comments, people are like, well, this well, this woman who's saying this is in America right now. So you're Asian in America. So of course, to be honest, you probably should care a little bit about how you're perceived. I'm not saying everybody gotta go watch the movie Shang Chi like three times, or you don't even have to watch it. But I just don't think that you can you can tell us that we're wrong for it. Because basically Asian Americans go through their own identity struggles and have to struggle growing up here, while the Asian from Asia get to come here as full adults with their full identity already, and then just be like, oh, well, you guys are confused. I will say this. Um I think that they're valid in sharing their perspective. I don't think they should be silenced. They're getting like 3,000 comments against them right now. Maybe um, I wouldn't be one of those people like leaving them hateful DMs. I wouldn't bash them. I wouldn't bash them, but literally they're being super self-centered because they're completely unconcerned with this house that they're viewing. Uh, because they're not necessarily like, nobody's basically caring about anything that doesn't impact their own yeah. life because they feel like their identity set. Obviously, a lot of Asian Americans, we're not even very good at our parents' language. You know, That's maybe true. just, you know, one out of 10, two out of 10, three out of 10 level of our own fluency in our, like, mother tongue. Me included. And it's like, how can people from Asia judge that? But in the same way, I, I do see uh, their cringiness at some Asian Americans being like, finally, we made it! Where it's like, no, Asia has had a ton of content locally for those domestic markets in language. Uh, or Asian American films that aren't approved by a major studio for quite some time. So I actually do think that these people, whether it's William Lee or C.K. Lam, interestingly enough, both from Hong Kong, I don't know what does that say, but uh, I see where they're coming from. They're talking about the cringiness of like Asian Americans acting like we've never been anywhere or don't have anything until white people validate us. Yeah, but... So, so actually, there are some valid points on both sides but ultimately I'm more siding with the Asian American perspective, but there are some valid points on both sides. Basically, the Asians from Asia, I feel like they feel like that makes Asians look weak and they don't want to. But my thing is, if you move to America, you want to understand American culture, right? 
and part of American culture and history is Asian American culture and history. So we have to acknowledge that. And by acknowledging that means you acknowledge the identity and the possible ups and downs it may go through or the lack of understanding of that identity from other people. So I'm saying it's this whole larger thing. On a simplified level, I see what they're saying, but I just think that they are not thinking about it deep enough to be honest. And that's my opinion. And not only that, if we're really gonna see movement on this, guys, it's gonna take a whole team effort. Yeah. Like we're gonna have to get on the same page and uh, even agree to disagree tacitly, like internally, just to move it forward in the big picture. Because outside people, they're, they're not gonna understand all this and it's just gonna be really confusing to them because literally gonna... people can't even differentiate between a fob from Asia and an Asian American in a larger like middle America sense. Listen, if uh, William Lee or CK Lam or any of the other uh, Asians from Asia would have said, you know what, we all need to be like Bong Joon-ho and come up with like 10, 20 parasites. That would be a way better way to come up. I would agree with them. But not only is that incredibly difficult and unlikely, but number two, it's just, um, they didn't make that argument. Right. You know what I mean? They were kind of like using it as an opportunity to like dump on Asian Americans who they see are in a weak position because a lot of Americans don't consider us American. A lot of Asians don't consider us American. So we're getting disavowed by both dominant teams. Yeah. So it's almost like you get put on special teams. You're not on offense or defense for any team you join. You go back to Team Asia, they're trying to put you on special teams. You, you know what I mean? In NFL, you want to play offense or defense. You don't want to be stuck on special teams. So it's like... I feel like we're getting, rele they're, they're trying to relegate us back to that role as we try to rise up. Now, to their point, I do think that sometimes Asian Americans have a cringy view of like self-identity that doesn't involve looking backwards to Asia and learning the motherland uh -huh. language and the history. Um, and I would agree that that's wrong. So I think both sides got to do work. But at the end of the day, guys, we're still in this transition period where we're almost like figuring things out. Now, what do you think? I mean, as somebody who's, uh, you were born in Asia, yeah, and you've seen both sides, right? right like maybe right. even some people in your family are kind of on the more like, oh, I don't care about representation side. Mm -hmm. And obviously you are trying to get roles in Hollywood or you know basketball movies and it matters a lot. Right, I, I just think like, it doesn't matter where you're at. Everyone has their own uh, beliefs and you know, uh, understandings but and perspectives, but don't tell what other people how to live their life or be how they should be, you know, based on your, you know, uh, perspectives and beliefs. And like, at the end of the day, just gotta stop hating on each other. If anything, we should be uplifting together. And, you know, whether, like I said, it might take time, it might be, it might go back and forth, but at the end of the day, it's like, you shouldn't tell people how to live their own life, especially if, if, if you're like across the country, like you don't really understand our culture. And obviously it's fair that we don't understand their culture as much, but that should help, that should tell us to learn about each other more, right? Instead of just like bashing on each other. Especially, I feel like we are ABCs or Asian Americans that um, even though we're pretty American, we understand the um, international culture pretty yeah, yeah, well, like yeah. better than most American born Asians. Of course, for sure. yeah. I just think that both, both parties should learn about you know each other's you And know, it, it sounds crazy and it sounds like we try to like tie it up with a nice bow, but that's literally what has to happen. Like people have to do work. There's gonna be no figuring out this rift by just like talking about it. Right, people actually right. have to go learn about learn each about other. It. No, you gotta go to Da Long Yi Hot Pot in New York or 626. Six. You guys, we're not gonna argue our way out of this, but in a very Confucian way, Andrew, we can learn our way out of this. Wow. Be wild. All right. All right, hey guys, is this uh, shrimp cooked? Yeah. Uh, is, is, is it pretty firm? The shrimp paste is, yeah. It's yeah, the little... shrimp paste and the clams. The clams were like a 10 out of 10. Yeah, 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 no yeah. Shrimp cap. Paste. All right, guys, moving on to our second topic as we finish up the hot pot, we have to talk about the headline that's going crazy, China bans sissy men. Now that's the headline. It's going viral, of course, for a number of reasons. It's causing a lot of controversy I mean, let's just and a say lot this. of conversation. A number of people sent me that article. Okay. In English, obviously, um, I can read a little Chinese, not very well, but uh, I didn't read any of the Chinese articles, but I did, you know, it, it sparked me to do some research. Yeah, so we had to do a little bit of research and I encourage you guys to do your own research on this topic as well to get clearance because it sounds confusing. You're like, oh, are they banning just sissy men? And that sounds very, very harsh. Actually, there's a misinterpretation of this Chinese term, yang pao. So um, that term actually in China has multiple meetings. So it actually, um, that was sort of like some of the phrasing used in state media, but um, in the actual, like, I guess like rule book, they got handed down, they don't use that language. Okay, so the reason why they are banning a bunch of stuff, and this is not the only thing they banned, they had a lot of other bans on like vulgar celebrities, um, they put a ban on like internet celebrities that are showing too much wealth. Oh, you can't make it rain anymore. Yeah, you can't you make it rain. You definitely cannot make it rain. They don't want to show wastefulness. Obviously, they kind of banned certain levels of movies. 
mukbangs or mukbangs. mukbangs. Um, so because they didn't want that to influence their population. Now, what I'm trying to understand that China is doing is like they're trying to like set up the next generation to carry China through. And in their belief, which a lot of people obviously disagree with, is that they're coming down strict and kind of like kind of censoring certain imageries for the youth, especially, right? Now, yeah. how strict are these bans and what is the actual punishment? I don't know because <clears throat> at the end of the day, guys, if your parents tell you, hey, you can't go out to that party or you can't date girls or guys, guess what? You can still no, find I, the I, workaround. Right? No, I think 28 things got banned. Yeah. Like literally, there was a that gigantic a list. And of course, um, in terms of like, I guess the presentation in the Western media, we're only gonna get like a few of them. Yeah. The ones that, you know, sensationalized news well, are good that we them. find offensive in the West the most, yeah, right? Yeah, the ones that get the viral hits. I mean, what do you think in general, we're not talking about any specific ones, but what do you think about just like the bands in general for them to try to have like a cultural rejuvenation? I think that they're just kind of thinking about the long term of how media affects people. Now, one of the things that kind of like the Chinese government is trying to avoid is this crazy worship of celebrities because there has been some celebrity scandals, pretty bad ones recently, obviously with very popular guys. And it's kind of like, well, do you want to let these idols become so popular and then Honestly, they turn out to be negative people, mm -hmm. and that's. You mean, you're talking about like a Chris Wu type situation. Chris Wu's type situation was bad, and it was almost like, well, if the, all these people look up to Chris Wu and we let him have like unlimited power and unlimited influence, and then he does something bad, it's going to influence other people in a bad way. Now, I think that is a somewhat simple way to look at a lot of human behavior, but I think they're just looking at it in the long term and on a mass scale. My major takeaway is that, um, listen, guys. I think when you look at a country like China, and it's not a very spiritual country, uh -huh. so there's not really like, I guess, a, you know, religious baseline for understanding a lot of things. Um, they kind of like, I wish they had a more organic culture so people would just sort of make the right decisions or the, you know, I, who knows what the actual right decisions are. That's very subjective, right? But let's say in my eyes, the right decisions more organically, but in any sort of instance where that's not available, then the government has to come through with a law. But it is a little bit like uh, letting your kid get fat and then saying your kid can't, gotta go on a hardcore diet. Right. Whereas there could have been some more uh, sustainable maintenance previously to prevent your kid from getting fat to begin with. You're saying they're kind of taking it zero to a hundred real quick. Yeah. And maybe that is a little unfair. Ideally, they would have done taken steps, but that's hard to Right, slower escalation, slower acceleration yeah. is more a goal. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about, the ban on gaming, where it was like, man, maybe y'all should have made the society more fun to begin with so people didn't even see gaming as like mm -hmm. the number one option. Now, I think one thing that a lot of people are mentioning, and I'm gonna end off my point here, is like a lot of people are like, oh, well, where are the parents? It's all up to the parents and the family to decide all this. Why is the government stepping in? Now, uh, obviously, China is a different society. Very different society, and, 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 and let me just tell you this. It's really different. And Chinese parents are very stressed out, you know, um, with everything that's going on in China. I'm not making excuses, but yeah, the, the government is stepping in and trying to help parent the kids. I don't know. It's It, it doesn't look great. It doesn't feel great, but I'm, I'm sure that there's long-term reasons for it. So, no, any final takeaways? I just think, you know, it's really hard for uh, the overall consents to fix something or change something or like, you know, lay the laws upon something when it's already too late. Right, you can't wait till it's the last minute where everything's already like effed up already, and then all of a sudden, all right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna try to change this, like, like you said, from zero to hundred or hundred to zero. Like at that time, it's already too late. Just to our first topic, I think the Asian American identity is still very much in flux, and obviously, what is uh, China's modern culture gonna be, and society gonna be, and how much big of a role our government is or not going to play in it? Uh, it's still in flux. Yeah, man. I just think you know, China is a unique country for better or for worse, and that they can actually implement stuff like this right. versus America. There's no question you're not doing any of this. So even if people uh, might want to, like let's say for example, there was like a more right-wing president, for sure they would probably think of it, but the, the, the mechanisms wouldn't allow for the implementation. Well, I don't think the American people would take it. Yeah. This was a dope discussion. Uh, the Hot Pot Boys podcast taking place at one of the best hot pot restaurants in the world, Da Long Yi. Last but not least, guys, what was your favorite thing, man? I'm going with the shrimp paste. I thought the shrimp paste was A1. Okay, aside from this plate of clams, which I definitely recommend you get, actually those, it's gonna sound very ABC and American to me, those cheesy meatballs. They come up, they made their own cheese-filled 
meatballs that you bought. They were cheese meatballs? Yeah, yeah. there was, there was. There's I, still one right there. There's cheese in there. There's oh, cheese those. inside, bro. Okay, oh. What's your favorite? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I just, I had one, I had some of the beef, man. It's just like so tender, so soft. And, and uh, yeah. I will say the fact is, Andrew, they ship in a lot of their ingredients is, uh, from Sichuan, oh. from Chengdu. That's so, what you know, Chengdu, Chengdu Sichuan. Fancy. That's how you know, man. Dalong Yi, only two in America. Like we said, one is in San Gabriel, where we used to live, and the other one is Chinatown, New York, where we live now. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching that episode. Make sure you hit that like button, click subscribe. Let us know if you want more of these episodes. Also, let us know what you think about these topics, because I think there's a lot to say, and I know that maybe the YouTube comments, I don't know. I think it's you got more characters to work with than a TikTok comment. So, anyways, let us know in the comments down below. I just, I'm just glad there's a lot more news to talk about nowadays, guys. Yeah. I could do this every week. Every day. Easy. Oh, Easy, I buddy. would eat at Da Long Yi every day for sure. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching that episode of the Hot Pop Boys. Make sure you follow Nelson Chan on Instagram, social media. You're going back to LA. And uh, till next time, we out. Peace. Peace.